when we have a specimen that is undergoing tensile stress, we can sketch something called a force elongation graph to illustrate the relationship between the variables. So what is a manipulated variable is we are stretching, right? So we are exerting a force to stretch the specimen. So the manipulated variable will be the force. What is the responding variable? The responding variable will be the amount of change of length that is experienced by the uh, specimen, or we call it the elongation. How much does it stretch out? for the specimen so that's the responding variable so we know there's a manipulator that's the responding we can actually plot or we can sketch a graph of force and elongation to see what are the relationship between the two variables so this is how a tensile stress sort of looks like so you basically you have a specimen over here then you clip or you hold on to both end of the specimen then what will happen is you can adjust this crosshead over here to move upward slowly. So whereas you move this crosshead upward slowly, you are stretching the specimen great stronger and stronger. Okay, the amount of stress that you exert, the amount of tensile stress that you exert on the specimen will increase as you move this crosshead upwards. So what is doing the measurement? This load cell here will be doing the measurement to see how much stress is being applied on the specimen. And you can measure the length of the specimen here to determine the strain of the specimen. Okay, so after that, you can uh, plot a graph of force against elongation. And uh, this is what we call as a force elongation graph. Okay, later in later videos, we'll, uh, we'll try to uh, look at the pattern. What, we, what can we see when we have a force elongation graph for brittle objects or for ductile objects? But for now, let's just say that we can we can sketch such a graph that is called as the force elongation graph. Okay, then once we have a force elongation graph, we can move on to sketch another graph which is called as a stress strain graph actually. Stress again is sigma, strain is epsilon. Okay, since we know that sigma here, the stress is equal to force divided by area, and we know that the strain over here, epsilon, is equal to the change of length divided by the original length, what can we do is we can take this force over here, divide by the area then you obtain stress whereas the elongation here if you divide by the original length of the specimen you get strain epsilon so now you have stress you have strain you can sketch a graph of stress against strain and this is what we call as the stress strain graph so there are two types of graph that you can sketch for a uh, for a uh, tensile stress or tensile test one is called a force elongation graph, one is called a stress strain graph. Okay, one thing you need to be, uh, you need to take note is area, as we have mentioned in the first video, we have already said that we assume the area to be constant throughout the tensile test. Even though we know that when we stretch, there's supposed to be, uh, the material supposed to get thinner and thinner, but we are going to assume it to be constant here. Okay, why do we need to be constant? Like, here is the reason. If we assume the area here to be constant, and we know that origin length, it's an origin length, it's not a changing value, then L and A here, we are, we are both constant throughout the process. Then we can say that the stress strain graph will have the shape, we have the same shape as the force elongation graph. Okay, if you take a graph, you multiply or divide with a constant, the shape of the graph will not change. And because area here is a constant, we assume it to be constant, and L0 here is a fixed value. So because these two values are not changing throughout the process, we will see that the force elongation graph and the stress strain graph should have the same shape because they are just being manipulated by multiplying or dividing with a certain fixed value. So the shape will be the same. So when I say if I analyze a stress strain graph, it's the same as me analyzing a force elongation graph because they share the same shape. Okay, so that's the idea for force elongation graph and stress strain graph. The two graphs that we will be looking at when we're analyzing a tensile test or compressive test of a material.